Hey, my hey. name is Zandy Chestnut, and I'm a 30-plus year resident of Ward 7 in Washington, D.C., east of the Anacostia River, and I uh, work with an organization that is, uh, the mission is to bring people and environment together to empower the people to change their spaces, their environment, and consequently change themselves as a result. And I'm introducing you to an area here in uh, Ward 7 off of 42nd Street Northeast, uh, Fort Mahan Park, which is a national park, and a project that my organization, Groundwork Anacostia River DC, uh, worked along with 40 other organizations and volunteers from around the area to rejuvenate the park and to connect this part of our community, which is a city park, to the national park. Fort Mahan has a walking, biking, hiking trail that stopped right here. And our goal was to connect the rest of the community with the park and to connect with Watts Branch Park, which runs about one and a half miles from uh, southeast, northeast D.C. to the Anacostia River. So uh, we had about 600 volunteers that came out in September, and we planted trees, we removed invasives, we created sight lining, which, as I was explaining earlier, is the removal of weeds and vines uh, from the tree base so that you can look into your space behind that area. And we did this for safety reasons because a lot of our community members use this as a pedestrian way, coming to and from work or going to school. We had a, a, a rash of purse snatchings and, and other crimes because they use this park as a place to hide. But now that you can see, you can look right through the park, you can see the playground area, and it's still under construction, and you can also look into the woods, and you can see the, 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 the path. If you would decide to jog or ride your bicycle, you'd be able to be seen from the street because of that sight lining work that was done uh, last month. We also planted, oh my God, we planted about 40 or 50 trees this particular time uh, to create um, um, drainage to prevent flooding when it rains. And we have uh, butterfly gardens, we have native trees planted along the way. And if you see this hill there, it's not really a hill, it's called a berm. It's a pile of uh, soil covered with sod, and it helps absorb water, rainwater, and uh, uh, um, has a major impact on keeping flooding from going into our basements and our yards because we live in a flood zone. Mm -hmm. So the, the trees, of course, help with the water uh, retention, and the berms help with new grass, and just the fact that our community came together on that particular day and saw hundreds of volunteers come out to work within their community from all areas of the city uh, made, gave us a pride in the fact that we were working together as a group of people to improve our environment, and that's what it's all about. And uh, uh, I already explained that Washington, D.C. has uh, one of the largest tree canopies in the country. It's called the greenest city in the USA, mm -hmm. and that's because of our old trees, but we're losing a lot of those, so now we're working with other organizations like the Casey Tree Foundation, Anacostia Watershed, to uh, bring more trees back into our community, especially those that have been damaged by disease and um, weather, uh, wind, those types of things that take down trees. And then we also have a problem with our own children using trees as swings and those types <laughs> of things. So we have to educate them that this is not what you do with the tree, you nurture a tree, and then eventually the tree will nurture you mm -hmm. okay, by either providing shade, lowering the temperature around your home, 
uh, absorbing water with its roots, providing a living space for uh, birds, and uh, it just improves the whole community, your whole feeling of your community it makes you want to be there mm -hmm. and enjoy it and share it with others. And that's basically what our organization is about. And how long have you been doing this work? Well, technically, I've been doing it for decades. Okay. But officially, we decided to go under an organization called Groundwork USA, which uh, invites communities to be a part of their organization to improve their environment and their community in the way that we've been doing it. And in that sense, we became a 501 c 3 organization. Uh, we are able to receive funds from uh, the EPA and the National Park Service to help us you know, uh, do, do our job in our communities. And we become like a bridge for those agencies in our community because without us, our community sees these folks as outsiders. Mm -hmm. So we become a liaison for those these two factors, the community and the agencies, the federal agencies, who normally have been kind of just outside because they can't get the trust of the people that they're working with. Mm -hmm. So uh, we applied for this trust last year uh, during the summer, and we were officially approved uh, by December of last year, and now everything is officially on the paper as far as it's being bona fide. <laughs> but prior to all that, we were still working in our community because you don't really need papers to work in your community. If you live in your community and you respect your community, you're going to be working in it whether you have an organization under you or not. And that's what we've been doing. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, community members that are working with us. And in some cases, we have community work members that are not working with us because they don't understand the importance of greening the city. They're still stuck in to the basic survival and not concerned about that. But we should all be concerned about that because mm -hmm. without it, there's nothing. Nothing. Would you talk a, a little bit more about the the resistance that you might be getting from the community or some of those issues that might be causing that resistance? Well, believe it or not, there's some people that don't like trees. They don't like trees. And some of the reasons for not liking trees is because they bring birds. Birds poop on my car. And birds uh, mess up the sidewalk and... Uh, trees, the leaves fall on my tree, they fall on my yard, I don't have time to rake them, I don't have time to worry about if, if the branch is falling. Uh, and then also there's there's other things with the, with the city, there are a lot of our council people that are green minded, but then there's some that really don't think that that's really important. So that kind of encourages that kind of behavior from the community when they would say, ah, we don't need any more trees in our community. Um, I think it's just a, a matter that it's not their priority. There are other things that are higher on their priority list than thinking about greening your community. Okay. Like what are some of those other priorities that people you think are placing? Just day-to-day -day survival. Okay. That so. nine-to-five thing. I know uh, I, I have six children, and they're all grown now, but when I was into just the rearing of them and supporting them and mm -hmm. trying to get them through college, I didn't have as much time to be involved in my community activities, mm -hmm. to, go to, the, to go to those advisory neighborhood commission meetings, or to be in one place that was planning the shape and development of my community because I had other priorities. Mm -hmm. You know, your PTA meetings, your uh, other activities that are going on in your community with your children, your family, mm -hmm. and you have to set your priorities, but sometimes you put things like your community and your involvement in your community on the back burner, just for basic survival. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to pause it.